Earlier this week, our teardown engineers got their hands on the Samsung Galaxy S7 and our tools barely had time to cool before we got the S7 Edge. While the S7 and the S7 Edge have very similar specs, we know the S7's big brother has an edge over its little brother in size, but will it pull out more surprises when we open him up? There's only one way to find out. Let's tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Comparing the S7 Edge to its slightly smaller brother shows the two phones look remarkably similar, with the exception of the Edge's curved display and Edge notifications. The S7 Edge measures in at 150.9 millimeters by 72.6 millimeters. It is 7.7 .7 millimeters thick and weighs in at 157 grams. The display is a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen that has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and a pixel density of 534 pixels per inch. Before we open the Edge up, we had to check out our Edge notifications to show off that curvy OLED display. Unfortunately, nobody knows our new number. Getting into the Edge is a very similar process to that of the standard S7. After liberal application of heat, our ice clack and pick combo is super effective despite some extremely stubborn adhesive. Last year, we were super disappointed by the S6 Edge's battery being trapped under the motherboard, but we're happy to find out that that's not the case with the new S7 Edge. We extract the whopping 3600 milliamp hour burner of a battery. That's 20% more capacity than the already capacious 3000 milliamp hour battery in the S7. It seems the trade-off for a marginally thicker Edge will be a longer battery life and less wear from frequent charging. Nice. When we get the motherboard out, we have a chance to see all it offers. First, there's four gigabytes of SK Hynix made LPDDR4 SD RAM layered over the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, 32 gigabytes of Samsung made MLC Universal Flash Storage 2.0, and on the other side, you'll see the Murata made Wi Fi module and the NXP made NFC controller. For the complete list of chips, head on over to our teardown at ifixit.com. On the cooling front, the S7 Edge has the same liquid cooling heat pipe we saw in the Galaxy S7. In case you missed it, check out the Galaxy S7 teardown on our site for all our detailed findings. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge got a three out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, many components are modular and can be replaced independently. But on the downside, the display needs to be removed if you wanna replace the USB port. Front and back glass make for double the crackability, and strong adhesive on the rear glass makes it very difficult to gain entry into the device. And finally, replacing the glass without destroying the display is probably impossible. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high-quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.